Hey everyone, how's it going? Brian here with another Java game programming tutorial. So first off, I apologize if you can hear my neighbor's weed whacker in the background. He could not be louder if you tried. But I'm going to do some uh, noise removal on the recording, so hopefully you won't be able to hear it. Anyways, when we left off, we made our menu up here, kind of cascade down. I don't know if cascade is the right word. Uh, but we can just add buttons and automatically indents them appropriately based on the options width variable for how many are in each row. Uh, we did kind of cheat at the very end of the episode to just move the menu uh, over to the center of this menu background area. So like I said last time, what we're going to spend this video doing is making it completely automatic so that all we need to do is set an X for our menu and a width and it will automatically space it appropriately. Uh, like for, for example, even right now, the spacing over here, the padding over here, is not equal to the padding in between them. So I'd like to get it all kind of evenly spaced. So that is going to be some fun math. Uh, it actually took me a tiny bit. I won't, I won't say too long, but I was thinking about the best way to uh, do this. And so I've actually got some OG stuff going on here. I'm going to show you guys and paint what I came up with here. I haven't done this in a, in a while. So let's first off say we have our menu here. Currently, all we have for our menu is this. We have an X and we have a Y. So all we have is a point really. And we're using that to kind of project our math on that based on how far away from the X and how far away from the Y our buttons are gonna be. So what we're gonna do this video is we're going to add a width and a height variable. So instead of just one point, we'll actually have kind of a screen. Uh, we won't be drawing it on the screen, but we're going to be using the width and the height to kind of help us out in the, the background, like in abstract kind of math terms. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Let's go to our Eclipse, and we're going to add two new variables instead of our menu. Right after x and y, that's where I like to put my width and height. So we're going to say width and height. They'll be integers as well. And set up right here. Make sure we include it in the constructor as well. So int width, int height, and then you guys know how to set it. Width equals width, height equals height. Okay, so this is our menu. Maybe I should have drawn it bigger. This is our menu right here. And let's say, for example, that we have two buttons. We'll have one right here. We ultimately want to get them all spaced out evenly, where we have an equal amount of padding before the first button, after the last button, and in between each button that's inside of the menu. So the way we do that is we take our total menu width, so I'll do that in orange here, the total width of our menu, which in this case I believe is going to be 192, right? Uh, I'm getting an error because we need to fix our create menu method up here. So go ahead and add width and height up here. Int width, int height, and width and height. And let's go back to our game class where we kind of cheated last time. We moved, I believe, our menu forward by 32. So if we go back to 1280 and do it the correct way, uh, we also need to add a width and a height here. So at 1280, I wish I could start the game and show you guys, but we have this, uh, this error right now. Basically, we want to take our total screen width, which is 1472, and oops, and minus 1280 out of that to get the total width of our menu, uh, which is 192, right? 1280, 1472, sounds like 192. So we have the X, the Y, next is the width, which is going to be 192, and then the height, which doesn't really matter in this case. Uh, I'll put 960 because I believe that's our entire screen height. Yes, 960. Okay, so we have a menu width now of 192 pixels. It begins at 1280 pixels. So if we run the game right now, you'll see that the first tower is going to flush with the X and Y, the very top left of this area right here. So from the very far right, we go over 192, and this is where our menu begins. So we have a width of one, I don't know what it broke there, of 192, forgive my handwriting, you should be used to it by now, uh, it's kind of hard with the mouse, 
width of 192. And what we want to do is we want to figure out how much padding we need. So if this blue line, this top blue line is 192 pixels, we want to figure out how much is left of those pixels when we take out the towers. If you can imagine, we're just kind of minusing out the tower widths because those aren't part of our, our padding. It's almost like they don't exist. And we're adding up what's left of the blue lines to get our total amount of padding that we'll need for the entire menu. So the way we do that is we take our width and we minus the amount of towers we have. So in this case, it'll be two multiplied by the width of those buttons, which in this case is 64 or our tile size. Okay. So two times 64 is 128. 192 minus 128 is 64. Cool. So we basically have 64 pixels total to play around with for our padding that we're going to evenly spread out amongst our menu in between our buttons and before and after them. Now, I kind of cheated with this drawing in that I already spaced them out somewhat appropriately, but for our menu's eyes, in the eyes of the computer, our buttons are really the, the left over here. We need to figure out, out of the 64 pixels, how much to put in each area. So it's obvious from us looking at this right now to say 64 divided by 3, right? One here, one here, and one here. But really what we're going to say is 64 divided by the amount of buttons we have plus 1. Right, because if we had a third button here, then the total amount would be one, two, three, four. So it's always going to be one more than the amount of options that we have. So let's go back to Eclipse now. Go to our UI class. And we're going to make another variable called padding. So we can uh, set that right up here. We don't need to put it in the constructor or anything. Padding. And right after the, right after the, I guess, option site, we'll set this dot padding equal to what we just did. Uh, it'll be the total width of our menu. We go back minus the number of tiles. So options width in our case, multiplied by the tile size. So minus options width multiplied by tile size. Uh, equals 64. And then we also want to divide it by the number of tiles. Divided by options width plus one. Remember, we're always adding one in addition, in addition to it. So that's the amount of padding that we need in each of these sections before each button, or before the first button, after the last button, and in between each of the buttons there. Now, we just set it when we create our buttons, uh, we need to move our buttons to the appropriate length, distance, pixels. Anyway, b.setx. Right now we have it at the x, which is the very start of our menu, plus the button amount. We can kind of ignore this. That's just to indent it. Uh, multiplied by the tile size. And that makes sense, right? We start over here, 0, 0. That's the first button. And we multiply by each of the tiles as we go further along, because we have no padding currently built into our menu. So to change that, we are going to set x equal to x plus, and forgive me, this is kind of hard to talk out loud while I'm working through this here, x plus the padding the padding okay, let's do this. Erase all this, and we will go x plus the button amount multiplied by the padding plus the tile size. And the reason we're doing this is say we are at the very first button. The button amount will be zero, by the way. We start at zero uh, for our first button. So we're at zero, zero. And then we want to add the button amount times the padding plus tile size. So you know what? In fact, this is why I like to walk through it for myself as well. We're also going to add the padding at the very end there. Why is that not uh, working? Oh, because there's no parenthesis. There we go. So we're adding the padding, which brings us to right here. And then we're saying we also want to add the amount of buttons 
multiplied by the padding plus the tile size. So for our first button, the amount of buttons we have is zero. So multiplied by the, whatever it is, the tile size, anything, is gonna give us zero. So this is where the first button starts. For the next button, our button amount is now one. So we go plus the padding, plus one times the tile size, plus one times the padding, and now we're here. And it keeps going forever and ever. The next one will be the padding, plus two times the tile size, plus two times the padding, and now we're here for our next button. Okay, so we obviously, well, let's try this out first and see if this works. And of course it didn't work the first try. Well, it worked the first try. Beta set X, X plus button amount times padding plus. Okay, that all seems right. So I feel like I walked through everything with you guys, so it should work. Oh, okay, this is why. Uh, we just need more parentheses. Right now we're just dividing the options width by the tile, or multiplied by the tile size divided by that. We need to include the width in this first section. So open parenthesis, close parenthesis. Let's try that. Now keep in mind we'll only have one row because we're not doing the indentation right now. But there we go. Looks a lot better, right? So we have an equal padding before the first tower, after the last tower, and in between the towers right there. And it's all automatic. So in our game class from now on, when we just add a tower, it'll automatically space it out the appropriate uh, distance. So obviously now we just need to indent it, which is super, super easy. We're gonna make a parenthesis right here. We say button amount, modulo two. Remember we talked about this last episode and that should actually fix it, I believe. Let's try it. It did, cool. So now we have real spacing. We're not uh, manipulating these big numbers that don't make any sense. Um, what I'd like to do in the future is maybe even get rid of the width. I know we just created it. We can keep it for another constructor, but kind of like our draw quad text versus our quick draw. I think it'd be cool to have a kind of a quicker menu where we just have an X and a Y, and then we take the X uh, and compare it to the total width of the screen and kind of just say like everything to the right of the X is part of the menu, if that makes sense. Uh, but anyway, we have our menu looking good now. And I think we're going to maybe make a few more touches in the next episode or two and then move on to something else uh, beyond our UI. Maybe start working on a better cache system or who knows, maybe we'll do another poll on Patreon. As you can tell, I'm starting to lose my voice again. A lot of yelling. Uh, but yeah, thanks a lot for watching and I will see you all next time on Indie Programmer. Indie Programmer.